Welcome back, everybody, to the fifth episode of Three Dudes in Their Twenties. Uh, today, obviously, we uh, do not have a guest on. A bit different than the past other weeks, featuring Grant, Tobin, and Will. Uh, before we What's start, I um, want to give a quick shout out to a good friend of mine, and I guess a friend of all of ours, uh, Alex Shomack, for making all the intros and stuff. A lot of the intros and endings you guys see is made by her. Thanks, so, Alex. You're the really, best. We really appreciate it. And then another shout out we want to do is to Children's Lantern, which Grant, you can kind of go in depth as far as that. We 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 attended an event um, this past weekend, a Children's Lantern event. So Grant will kind of explain what that's all about. Yeah, we just want to give a quick shout out to uh, Children's Lantern and um, Steve Hausehorn, um, kind of the he's the hierarchy there, um, president of the organization. Uh, it's a nonprofit organization. Um, I'll put the um, all the links and everything to their website and our bio. Um, basically, they oversee um, supporting families um, that um, want to be foster care parents um, and um, also have uh, adoption kind of sites. Um, their one of their main messages is strengthening the vulnerable, empowering the community. Um, so we were able to help out with the Children's Lantern Gala this past weekend. It was a blast. And um, so we just want to say thank you once again to them. And uh, thanks, Steve. Hope you're watching. Uh, how you doing? Yeah, it was a huge honor and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So today, Will, Will's one of those guys. He doesn't like to know the topic before. Uh, yeah, literally all day, <laughs> Will's been like, every time we saw him at lunch, down the, and to class, he's like, please don't tell me. What no, okay. So they try to tell me and I say, no, don't tell me because I want my reactions to be genuine because I hate having like a scripted thing because I always end up forgetting what, what you my scripted gonna thing say. is going to say anyway. I so I'd much rather have it be all genuine. 100%. But that's, so, that's very respectable though. Yes, yeah, so I want it to be genuine because so. I want my genuine reactions on this because that's what this thing should be. It should be very genuine. Today we're no. going to be talking about uh, pursuing things and the process of pursuing something new. Okay. Um, I love that, that genuine reaction. How do you feel about that, Will? <laughs> what are you pursuing? That's how I feel. What are you pursuing right now? I guess I'll just say, uh, I mean, this is a very big props and shout out to Will, but um, I guess golf at this point in my life, um, you know, basketball season ended a couple months ago or about a month ago, I guess. Um, a month before that, he kind of just threw the idea out there like, hey, uh, we're looking for golfers. Like, would you want to join? Obviously, have a good time with your buddy and kind of go that route. And so um, up to this point, I guess the past two or three weeks I've been pretty locked in and I'm just pursuing trying to become a college level golfer, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, that's been on my mind and, um, it kind of took me some pushing as far as from Will, from my parents, like, Hey, like this is going to be a good thing for you. It's going to be a positive, like the power of yes, that's the power of yes. We talked about it before. So I, Went ahead, said yes, and uh, so here we are today. So, thanks, man. It's awesome. It's what so, we do. Yeah, for me, I think I'm not pursuing like one big thing, like a big sport at yeah. the moment. But there's a lot of little things that I'm kind of going about right now. One thing is, uh, shout out to Professor Alaire. It's my guy. Uh, he's been trying to get me into the choir room quite a bit, and I oh. keep telling him, you know, like I'm not a singer. I'm I, I play instruments. I don't use my voice, but he, he refuses to say that, and I it's kind of rubbed off on me a little bit. You know, people kind of have a tendency to push you towards things that you might want to do, you might not want to do, but at the end of the day, it'll kind of be a good thing, good experience. Um, another thing, um, there's definitely a few more I had in mind. I mean, sports for soccer for the next season, um, running and stuff like that. Also, today will be the third day that – I've taken a cold shower. Oh, cold shower, really? Yeah, and um, I mean, obviously, you guys have probably heard there's, like, benefits and stuff to cold showers and whatnot. Um, yeah, if you go check out our Daily Habits episode, we kind of mentioned it a little bit. A little bit, yeah. I, I think we need to go more. This isn't the habit episode, but we could go more in depth in another episode. You haven't, yeah. you haven't showered yet? But, <laughs> cold shower, Will, cold shower. Oh, cold shower, sorry. Okay, cold shower, my bad. Not well, today. It's only, fault. like, 7 p.m. Well, I guess a quick, well, a quick overview for... I soccer later. Oh, okay. A quick overview for, could you maybe explain like the why behind it real quick? And you don't have to get in much detail, but. So I guess the why goes along with something else I'm pursuing, which is you recommended to me other podcasts. There's a guy on YouTube 
His name's Andrew Huberman. He's really good podcaster, has a lot of good, uh, a lot of knowledge in general. And he talked about in one of his podcasts that I watched the benefits of cold showers, how it increases, you know, adrenaline, focus, dopamine, helps with homework. Like if you want to do um, homework and stuff like that, cold shower beforehand will wake you up and kind of get you in the mindset. It's kind of like what we were talking about as far as chess and some other stuff that wakes your mind up or music. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of, it's kind of just one of those things. Nephron going. Yeah, something like that. Well, how about you, man? What yeah. have you uh, been pursuing lately? My career. Right. So uh, everything I've been doing uh, for the last, I can't remember how long it's been to my ultimate career being a, a basketball coach. Don't care um, how will I get there, what I have to do. It's, it's just trying to become a basketball coach is what I want to do is for my career. So if that's teaching or if that's being the custodian of the school, if I can be the head boys basketball coach, I'll do it, right? So one of those things is just, you know, networking with coaches, networking with other guys in my position, in my field, um, talking to superintendents, principals, teachers, anybody. I, I'm just trying to pursue my career. I, I want to, because I know what I want, and I, and I know what I know I can do. One of the things is just, just I, that's what I've been pursuing. I've been pursuing that for a while now. So that's me, man. That's awesome. So what do you guys think? We'll go around the table again. Um, starting with Grant, obviously. What's something, because like you, you pursue things, right? Right now you are in college pursuing a college-level degree and eventually a mm-hmm. doctorate degree. Um, me personally, going to college teaches you a lot, right? But I think your experiences and stuff you do on the side also have a huge impact on what you do, you know? Like I might be learning exercise science stuff, but as far as – the podcast I'm watching and the everyday habits I'm doing as well all play into effect. So like as far as being successful, being a successful doctor, which you're going to be one day, how, like, what are, um, what are some side, uh, not side hustles, but like, what are some things on the side that you do to kind of help think about and stuff to help benefit your situation that you're in? Yeah. Um, I think, um, you bring up a great point that you're when you're in the midst of your journey for me, you know, medical field, medical school or whatnot, a lot of times throughout my college career, you've, you're so focused on that one kind of aspect, that one passion of getting good grades or um, studying, doing all of that. Um, but I think what I've learned, too, is there's a a bigger circle to life. There's a bigger, you know, how I interact with people on a daily basis, how I can use experiences such as volunteering or serving others. Um, especially this past couple months, I think I've really pursued that, um, and just really enjoying my kind of end to my undergraduate career because, and I'm doing things like serving, I go into the gala like that was Mm -hmm. an opportunity and like inviting other people to come with me to kind of not show them the ropes, but to show them the benefits of serving others and what that can do for you. Mm -hmm. And I think all all of that being said, pursuing um, things that make you a well-rounded person, I think that that's what I'm going to take in um, to be uh, like the best medical professional I can is just to be a well, like a well-rounded person. So um, pursuing those things. Um, and then obviously, um, you know, every day I kind of, you know, my rock is, is the word and like the Bible. So I really make sure I pursue my faith too, um, through it all, because like, I want to be anywhere I am without that really. So, um, I guess, uh, a mixture of those two things, um, as well as, um, cherishing the time I get to spend with like good friends has been, um, really what I've been reflecting and pursuing. The past six months, I'd say. So. so you're pursuing a lot of things that are important to you. Yeah, and that aren't necessarily technically related to my career, but on the other side, they are. Because if you don't have that backbone, mm-hmm. you know, what – if you don't have that foundation, what does your success mean, really? You right. Know? And I guess that's a good foundation for this video. And if our viewers don't take anything else away except this, it would just be – to take um, 
everything you pursue has to deal with priorities and whether it be doing, spending your money on whatever it is, bad college, I wouldn't say bad college, but like spending your money on whatever uh, college kids sp- like to spend their money on. Legos. Legos, for example, <clears throat> rather Boba than. Um, Captain America shields. Black Panther Black masks. Panther Black Panther Dude, we got to bring that for the next episode. Bro, we're going to bring all our stuff for the next episode. That's awesome. Maybe we can pause it right now and just go, go get it. <laughs> Let's go right get now. it. Go back. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. But, um, what was I saying? But yeah, you, I mean, you bring up a good point of money, you know, pursuing things that I think not only benefit you, but benefit others. And like, if your number one priority is to serve people, your number one priority is to get good grades and study, um, rather than you're going to have to sacrifice time with your friends. You're going to have to sacrifice maybe time with your family. You know, maybe your family's the most important priority in your life right now. Mm -hmm. Um, my family is very important to me, but to some extent, I have to sacrifice seeing them for school, you know, for my future's sake, um, which kind of sucks at times, but it's just about what's up on that priority list. So I think that's a huge thing to kind yeah. of. Like I'll say, cause like, obviously me and Will are like a, a little bit older. So like, at least for me, like I've gotten to the point where I've got to the level of I'm on the right track of like where I'm going professional, like professional career and everything. So now I have time to reflect back and really make sure I cherish moments with my family. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think as you get older too, you know, throughout your twenties, you'll always like go back to that. Like it's your rock, man. You got to get, you know, mama Tobin, mama Johnson, mama Garlock, you know, they're all important to us. But with that being said, like, how do you kind of go about that mindset? Will? Um, kind of reflecting on the original question, um, how I am trying to get to um, uh, what I am pursuing. Uh, I would say, like, I go to high school games. Like, I go to high school games. I, you know, sometimes if I see, like, if I know a coach, I'll talk to him after the game. Um, like, I go to my high school coach's practices. I go there. Shout out to Kill. It's my guy. Um, I go I go there. I do that. Um, I try to help out anywhere I can, basketball-wise, anywhere I can. I'm just... Doesn't matter if it's high school, middle school, second graders, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to work in basketball. It's one of those things. I watch a lot of basketball too. Like I will become a hermit. March Madness week. coming up. <laughs> on the date of this recording, we're about a week out from the first four games. So this will get a re- this will get released like a day before the first four starts. So um you won't Ain't hear no from Ohio, me. Man. You won't hear from me. Leave him alone. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> Do not talk to me. You will not get a response. You'll find him in the dark. You'll find him in the dark. But yeah. Born in the dark. Born in the dark. Okay, th- thanks, Tom. <laughs> thanks, Tom Hardy's. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I got you. Um, but yeah, so it's one of those things where, like, that is all. And, like, I'm sorry to my professors. I'm sorry to everyone. I'll be watching every college basketball game all the time. Like, like literally. No, but I don't know if you can relate, but, like, Going through high school, did like even early years of college, well, you did this like oh you're, you're sitting in class and like you know I'm a dedicated student I'm and you are game. too. But well, man, we got the little you know we got the game. No, I don't have it on the side, bro. We had iPads at LCC. Oh. So what we would do is like in the picture and picture existed at this time. So picture and picture is low key kind of old, right? So what I would do is I would I would pull it up on on the browser, right? Whatever class I was in, man, picture and picture. You know I got one game on there. If I was in study hall and there are computers in my football mm-hmm. coach's study hall. Shout out to Coach Balti and Mr. Stafflinger. They're my study hall people awesome. my junior wrestling year. I would put that on a computer. So I'd have like three games. Yeah, you got like multiple and screens, my, tabs my, going. My, my high school football coach didn't care. He was in it with me. Yeah. So he had a game on his computer. Facts. I had two on these computers. I had one on my iPad. So we were watching four of the first round games. There you go. So it was it was legit. That's how Tobin was when the World Cup was going on. Hey, I was yeah. like, yeah, the World Cup was going on too. I, <laughs> I, I was going to say, I pro- I'll, say, I'll probably get a lot of hate for it, but like, I honestly don't really watch much live sports. <gasps> I probably should. I know, right? Except FCC, man. Drop the bomb. Yeah, I watch, I mean, a little bit of the World Cup and a few soccer games and a few baseball games uh, with my dad a while back. I, I don't watch uh, I don't watch as much as I probably should. But yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess like another kind of thing we can go into, because I kind of just thought of it, was how do we, like, how do you go about when you're faced with a possible option to pursue, pursue or opportunity to pursue? Like, what's your mindset going into pursuing something new? Um, well, there's a positive side of it and there's a negative side of it, right? There's a side that's like, 
oh yeah, like going into this, like there could be a lot of benefits, but the negative side, which I think in a lot of people and sometimes in me too, I'm not a perfect person. The side takes over where it's saying, well, you can't miss what you never had. You know, if I never tried it, then I'm never going to miss it or I'm never going to be upset that I didn't do it. I think that's what, well, we were at lunch today and Professor Allaire. Mm. Yep. That's exactly what he said. He was Guy. like, um, talking shout about Professor Allaire. Shout him out. Shout him out. He thing. said, come try it. If you didn't like it, you don't have to come back. The least you did was try it. Yeah. He basically was, he it. said, the least you can do is try it. So hmm? that's what I thought of like right there is when you're pursuing something new, think in the back of your mind, the least you could do is try it. You know? Right. Sometimes there might be fear to go along with what you're doing, but at the end of the day, nine times out of 10, you'll be happy you did it, you know, with some fundraising stuff, you know, a lot of it's, a lot of my mindset, it, sh- it really shouldn't be, but a lot of my mindset with like uh, fundraising and whatnot, it's like, I have to do it. I have to go do this fundraising for my team or for this club. But afterwards, it's honestly just a really good experience like working the Toledo walleye game or this gala thing that we just did. Like I had a really good time just serving the community and spending time with the people that I'm with and pursuing things goes a lot along with the people you surround yourself with, which we've talked about and how you guys kind of have similar, similar mindsets, how they kind of inspire you to do better things or hold each other accountable. I think the benefit too of pursuing new things is the connections you build along. Like you said, like, I mean, you probably got to meet some of the people at the gala. You've probably maybe met some people when you worked at the Toledo Walla games. Like, we met people when we worked at the Toledo football game. Like, you just meet new people along the way. So, right there, that's a benefit of pursuing, you know, new things. I can even say with golf, like, I met, you know, shout out to the Coach Coles and, and oh all the all, all my all my golf teammates. And But I would have never really got to build that relationship if I never pursued it. So, just kind of going off that, Will, what do you got? Yeah, um, I would probably say the same thing. I'd probably echo the same things you both said, right? Like, especially as, like, the networking is big for me because it's, like... Especially with coaching. Yeah, well, yeah, it's huge because in in the business, it's you get a job because you know somebody. Doesn't matter. Like, you could look at my resume matched up with a guy who went to, we'll just say, like, we'll say BG, for example. And we're both gunning for a GA job. And what they're going to do, especially if it's a school, if it's at a bigger school, they're going to look where he went to school, where I went to school, they're going to be like, where's Defiant? Okay, no, we know where Bowling Green is. I know that coach I can talk to. Even though if you read my resume, I have I did more than him in a week than he did his entire career, mm-hmm. right? But it's just one of those things where, like, the name, the name value says a lot. So it's one of those things where, like, but if any coach I've ever had or anybody I've ever worked with knows me and go, hey, that Will guy, he's legit. I know it says defiance, throw that out, read his resume. He is legit. He'll do whatever you want and, and more, right? So it's one of those things where like networking is probably the biggest thing for me. That, that goes a long way with the saying, like it's all about the people, not the place, mm-hmm. you know, because the people make a place great, even with small colleges or big colleges. Like this is a great place for just because, not just because of the people that we're with, but it's a great place because of all the facilities that they offer, everything, all the programs and stuff like that. That's all great, but the people also make it a great, a great experience, you know, so. DC, DC, DC. I definitely think like he brought up a good point there. When, when you're going through that experience where you're, you are pursuing something new, like you talked about how you got to put your all into it. You got to stay present. You have to really embrace that moment when you're building those connections. And so, like, there's a, a verse, uh, Luke 6.38, but at the end of the verse it goes, for the measure you use, it will be it will be measured back to you. So that kind of, like, spoke to me because it says basically how the amount of effort you put into something, you know, through the Lord, it, it'll get pushed back to you. But through life in general, like, it'll come back to you in some way. So if you're pursuing something new, I think this is, like, a piece of advice for the audience, just really with anything, if you pursue something, if you give it your all, if you give it everything you've got in that moment, no matter if it's going right or not, like with patience, it'll happen because it'll somehow come back to benefit you in some way. So I always just think about that. Like maybe this uh, serving opportunity, like, oh, we're, we're just making chicken fingers and fries, you know, at the mm-hmm. uh, Cedar Point, you know, shout out freshman year. Mm-hmm. But, um, 
You can't shout out a year, man. I mean, well, shout out to my teammates freshman year basketball, but because uh, that was that was rough. But like then you come out of that situation and like we became a little bit stronger as a team because of that. Or like I made I grew a stronger connection with some of my teammates because of that experience. So I guess like looking back now, it's like when you're in that situation or scenario, really just put your heart into it and hope for the best because it'll end up coming back to you, I think. That's another thing, too, is like if you're going to pursue something. We had someone in my high school, it was a while ago, talk about like being all in. Like that was his thing, his all being all in. So if you're going to pursue something, you got to be all in with what you're pursuing. Um, I remember when I was taking my EMT course and stuff like that, it was like the week before I had to take my national registry exam. And I swear, like nothing else mattered. Like that might be, I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing. It's kind of, it sounds bad to say that nothing else mattered in my life, but like in that moment, like I was so narrow with my view to where like I had to study this day. I had to study, I had to study. I had to pass this test because this is what's important to me right now. That's kind of how it was my personal training exam as well. Like I was so narrow focused. I made sure I had nothing, no other really homework to do to where I could just grind that out and study and and just dive in because like I was in my room with with both exams I was in my room like almost the entire day it seems like except for like getting food or you know talking to a few friends outside and stuff but I don't know if that's the healthiest you want to obviously space out what you when you study and stuff like that it's not a good habit which we talked about I mean that's I mean I can definitely speak on that with when I was going through my whole you know MCAT this past summer like If that's what's important to you. It was what was at my plate at the time, as they would say. So I had to be all in, like you said. And I kind of like, like through that, I'm a big motivational guy. So I would always like, some days you're sitting there like, man, like it's June and I'm in my house, my basement. It's cold and there's nobody around me. Why am I studying? Why am I (laughs) studying for eight hours? Like, why am I pursuing something like this? But then you go back to your why. And I think with pursuing new things... Like, I think it's good to be open um, to pursue new things. But then when you're like, as you're actively pursuing that, remember your why, like, cause that'll keep you coming back. And, um, well, there was a motivational guy, his name's Eric Thomas. I mentioned him in the last video, but he basically says like one of his main messages is like succeed as bad as you want to breathe. And he like was telling a story about how this guy, like, he would forget to he would forget to eat, you know. He was like so dedicated. It was he was talking about an actor or something. Uh, but like you have to be like in that moment. You got to be all in. So I don't know if you have anything to speak on that. Will name a time you were all in. You're we'll all in. Of, man. Uh, we'll kind of throw it on that. I'm always all in. I will say like it's Will Garlock, like, and he mentioned this. He's before, always him, bro. But he's always him. I'm like that. But you like he you're always up to like offering your time, your commitment. Like whether it's ambassador basketball golf, like you're always you're always runs. there, man. But or Lego runs. or Lego or Legos, yeah. Sometimes but, that's my favorite. But yeah, name like I guess like since you have so many, I'm always ready. Specific, like my thing is I always say I'm always ready, so I never have to get ready. Like you should always be ready, so you never have to get ready. Let that sink in for a little bit. Play the Jeopardy music while we wait. Da, 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 da. Yeah. All right, yeah, all right. But no, for real though, like that's my thing. I'm always ready for anything. Like that there are times, right, when I get asked to do things and I know there's no way I can. So it's one of those things where like I'm always ready to go do things, but it's one of those things where like if you have so many things to do at once, something's going to suffer, mm-hmm. right? So sometimes like if I got personal stuff I got to do, that's happening. Yeah. And I'm always. sorry to everything else, right? So... Like last night, like last night, me and my roommate Seth Seth Bowman, shout out to shout out to the Bowmanator, it's my guy, right? He he was like, "Hey, going to Walmart to go see if they got the Captain Rex at you in." I'm like, Did All they right. have it? I'll, I'll say that in the story. I'll, I'll I'll finish the story. So we we go to Walmart, right? Like we normally do. We're looking through the Lego aisle. Unfortunately, no Captain Rex on oh. Very very Ooh. mid very mid time Walmart. It was not fun, but it was one of those things where like. So there, I ended up I'm getting, I'm getting a set. He ended up getting, I don't think he got a set, but he had just had an extra set. You know, he's waiting to build, and he's like, bet we'll build those tonight. And I was like, all right, bet. So I end up going to the house. I got some food, and 
Sometimes you just don't feel right. You know, like mentally, sometimes you just don't feel good. One of those, I just don't know why I didn't feel very myself last night. So I sat in my room and built my Lego set. And he was pretty upset about that. Mm. So it's one of those things where like, my fall bominator, that's on me, right? It's one of those things where I just wasn't feeling all willy G, right? So it's one of those things where like, sometimes things suffer because more important matters come up. Yeah, like whatever was on your plate, you decided yeah, to... I, I decided that... was that, decide, that, that was important to you. So yeah. You just well, went ahead and did it, man. It was my thing was like, I decided that building it by myself would be more of a stress reliever, yeah. more of a thing where I just needed to be by myself. Yeah. What, what would you guys have to say about the fear of maybe pursuing something new or the fear of... I just which, thought of that question. That, that's kind of what I was thinking about is we're all scared or... Don't be afraid. We're, don't. We're, all, we're It's just natural Literally to be scared don't. of... Just don't be afraid. Doing something new. Just don't be afraid. But it should just be... Just don't be afraid. You stop... <laughs> I got, like I tell the kids, just don't. If you don't want to get hit with the ball, don't get hit by the ball. That's exactly that's just, just, just catch it. Like literally, the ball's coming at you. Just catch it. Don't. Yeah. Bet it. Baseball is a huge sport, and I guess we can use that as an example. If you if you're in the batter's box and like you have the thought that the ball is going to hit you, then well, you've you're, you're going to step out every single at bat lost, because yeah. the chance of the ball hitting you, you're going to be like, oh, it might hit me, so I'm going to back out so I don't get hit by this ball. When rather you have to just think of that coming right down the middle. Just don't be afraid. Exactly. Like literally, yeah. like I know it sounds redundant, and I know it sounds kind of stupid that I keep repeating it, but literally, that's what it's just don't be afraid. Sometimes the it's is pretty simple. Yeah, yeah. Well, literally, that's what it is. You're like, oh man, I don't want to fail the test. Then don't fail the test. Then, because if you think you're going to fail, you're going to fail. And the yeah. reason that you won't fail is if you go all in. If you go all in, there's no reason why you should fail. If you really don't want to fail, you'll try hard. You know, well, you do or do not. There is no try. You ought to said that. Do or do not. There is no try. So yeah. pursuing something new. If you genuinely want to pursue it. something new, you say yes. You got to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. It's with the just do it. Like joining all the clubs and stuff that we're all in. Like <laughs> at the student senate meeting, we're trying to build, <laughs> trying to build a Even Lego more club. Clubs. We're not trying to start a Lego club. We're trying to build a Lego. We're club. trying to create it. No pun intended. No, no. <laughs> hey. We we got the set. There's no booklet with the set. We just gotta make it. We just gotta make it. Which it's kind of difficult sometimes. This but is like a, you just if said you, yeah. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. Type, yeah. type this question. is kind of like. So when I met you guys, and then as we've grown older together, um, like we're in a lot of the, we're, we have similar mindsets, and we're in a lot of the similar clubs and everything, but, like for me, that's always been like who I am as a person is to try to join and meet as many new people as I can, try to gain knowledge from others as much as I can and serve others as much as I can. Would you say to the people that are not so familiar with pursuing new things, like how they can get on that kind of track or mindset of going to try to pursue something new? Well, one thing I can speak on experience is you probably won't regret it. Um, my sophomore year, this year, my second year was much more better than my first year. Um, it's not know, even over yet. It's not even over yet. And I don't know if that's because of not knowing you two my freshman year or if it was because I'm not involved with nearly as much stuff as I am now. Because sometimes it might be stressful going to all the meetings and stuff like that, but it's it truly is very rewarding. And yes, that might just be secondhand experience or secondhand knowledge, you guys hearing this through the camera, but it, it really is rewarding getting involved. And if you don't want to get involved, you join something, you're like, all right, this really isn't for me. Just respectfully decline, respectfully yeah, quit. Yeah, at least you, know? you like, tried. At least you put yourself out there. Just, just, just like, like said. Will said, don't be afraid. Just do it, bro. And you just got to do it. Like, if it's something you really want, you just got to do it. If you want to, I mean, even if you want to make yourself look good, like, if that's the priority, then... You will do stuff. You'll put your all into what you're doing. Mm, put your all. You want to join. Obviously, it should never be for personal benefit, service. But if that's what your priority is, you know, like, do it. Like, priority serving others, do it. Yeah, I would say sometimes it's you need to push. Sometimes you need to push either from yourself or from others. Because I know um, I pushed Adam Tobin down a hill to be my student senate pre vice president. I looked at him. I said, bro, it's you. I gave him no other choice. That's facts. So I, I pushed, pushed Adam Tobin to join APO. And that goes back to the well, we whole friend last thing, yeah. Literally, it literally like 20 minutes ago, it goes back to us talking about the friends you surround yourself with. I would not be in nearly as much involved if you guys weren't here to push me into things. 
right? So be careful who you surround yourself with. Not that your best friend's a bad person. I'm not saying that in any means, but just be cognizant of that. Be cognitive. Yeah, cognitive. Maybe not be careful. Be cognitive. Yeah. Good way to kind of finish out this topic for this episode is to talk about how the things that we have pursued so far, like whether they're working out for us or they're still in the kind of we're inclining to 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 get better at them, like what is that journey so far like? I guess I'll give an example. Like I'll start where I'm pursuing golf, right? The first couple of times I like have been golfing or like working on it hasn't been the best. But then like I started doing some research on my own. I contacted coach. I talked to Will about it. I I've I've put myself out there, I guess. I've put my all into it so far. And already I'm seeing like minor, minor results. So for me, like I holds very true what we've talked about so far on this episode as you just gotta put yourself out there and 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 go for it, I guess. Like literally try to want to succeed at something you're pursuing, you know, as bad as you want to breathe and you'll be successful. So that's exactly it. Um, be patient. A lot of things, the best things in life come with the longest amounts of time pursuing something. You're not going to get a college degree in a week. Yeah. Right. You're not going to become a doctor in a week. You're not going to be able to exactly. bench 400 pounds going to the gym two times. Shout out Lucas. Shout out Lucas. He's on the podcast uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, but that, that was my thing too. Like, I mean, when I was going to the gym very regularly, I wasn't seeing results within one to two weeks, you know? Um, it takes time. Patience is a huge step in pursuing things. And it's, it's a, it's a skill, you know, having patience is a skill. You so. get in the mindset of, Oh, it's all about the end result. Like it's all about what shooting, like what's a great golf score. will like shooting like five under par. That'd be phenomenal. Phenomenal. Well, it's all about that, you know, I wish. but like, you, I think you gain th- you gain more through something when you're pursuing it and it's a struggle when there's adversity because you learn from it and that's what it's all about. Yeah. Also, when you pursue something, I think it's important to you start right here and then the reward's right here and then when you reach that reward, it's almost like you get a huge sense of like happiness and joy. I think it's important that when you pursue something, all the happiness and joy comes what's, the in, what's in the middle, wow. right? The reward is just an added benefit, but the reward is really just found with in between. You know what I mean? So changing your mindset and uh, making the reward the journey will make you feel much more accomplished within your entire life, whatever it is. So any last thoughts, Will? Yeah, about that. Along those lines, I was looking, I was looking at a quote, you all, okay? So don't don't curse at me for looking down. <laughs> um being a big college basketball guy. Uh, yeah. Jim Volvano was the uh, was the head coach at uh, uh, NC State in the eighties, and he won a national championship. Took a team that I think they were like a six something. They were they were a mid seed. They weren't supposed to win. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ended up winning the, winning the um, underdog. Yeah, winning the national championship, and um, he was uh, he had terminal illness and he was dying. And uh, so some things he said that really you know uh, held a lot of weight was one was about dreams and stuff. Right, uh, you have to have an enthusiasm for life. You have to have a dream, a goal, or a dream, a goal. And you have to be willing to work for it. That's something I always say, and that's a good thing through things we're, we're striving for, right? So it's one of those things where it's what are we pursuing, right? So one of those things where you have to have an enthusiasm for it. Like you have to have an enthusiasm for wanting to be a doctor, right? You have to have an enthusiasm for doing the 15 million things you want to do with your life, right? So that's the thing you need. And then it's something he said, also, you know, John Cena said it too, but you know, most, most co- do, 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 do. mostly, uh, you know, Coach 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 V was, don't give up, don't ever give up. That's one of those things you just you just don't give up, right? So it's one of those things where you have to do it every time. Doesn't matter if you don't want to get up at seven in the morning and you know go do whatever you have to do, or get up at five, or be there at, until ten o'clock, eleven o'clock at night. And then be back in again at six. Like it's one of those things where, that's why you do it. You do it because you're striving for a goal. You're pursuing something. That's With, awesome, man. Pursuing, yeah. putting effort, pursuing, and remembering your why. Mm-hmm. I think those are the three main things we could say. And don't ever give up. Don't, don't ever give up. Don't be scared. 
And don't, don't be, be afraid. Don't be afraid. Way more than three things. But, but. <laughs> yeah. with all that being said, uh, for Grant Johnson, uh, Adam Tobin, and myself, Will Garlock, we want to thank you for tapping into the next episode of uh, Three Dudes in Their 20s. Yeah, and, three um, Dudes in Their yeah. 20s. Hey, That's well, what we are. One more thing. What up, bro? Giddy up and go get after it. You better giddy up and go with yeah, your life. Pursue something pursue new this what week. You That's our advice. Yeah, and uh, we want to thank up. you again for tapping in. You know, we got to saddle up and giddy up and go uh, on with your day or your night, morning, afternoon, whenever you're three you're in the morning. You're taking a cold shower. <laughs> Tobin. Tobin. Yeah, yeah, I'm not looking hasn't forward to that. Yet, but. It was weird. But, uh, yeah, again, we want to thank you for tapping into this. And um, we want to thank you again for always tapping in and, and watching us. And uh, let's giddy up and go. We'll All see right. you around. See ya. See ya. And his <laughs> name was John Cena. Oh,